Support for another round comes from Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com today for a domain experience that's transparent and easy to set up. Just make sure you enter offer code another round at checkout to get 10% off. Make your next move with Squarespace. Hi everyone, I'm Heaven. And I'm Tracy. And welcome to another round with Heaven and Tracy. Yay! It's a party, 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 it's a party. Ooh, what are we celebrating, Tracy? We're celebrating our 100th kind of episode. <laughs> 100-ish. What do you mean by that? <laughs> so, this is technically our 101 st mm -hmm. episode. Technically. <laughs> uh, but you know, scheduling, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. We be so busy, we don't have time to party all crazy. Yeah, and you know what else? We celebrate our own milestones here, mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. Everybody can celebrate the 100s of something. <laughs> but who's celebrating 101, though? We pioneers. Listen. We trendsetters. Hey. Et cetera. Et cetera. <laughs> we moguls. A don. <laughs> Icons. Legends. <laughs> Divas. <laughs> So we're going to have a, have a party. Yeah. Does it feel like we've done that many episodes No, to you? that implies I've like learned something. Mm. <laughs> like, oh no, this still feels very new. <laughs> what do I do with my hands? <laughs> no, it feels like we've learned stuff. Yeah. I feel like the show has immensely improved my life. Oh. I mean, honestly, okay, okay. we can't start the crying save yet. Save it. <laughs> save it for at least like 10 minutes Before in. we start crying, Tracy. <laughs> Yeah. What do we have on the show today? <laughs> so this is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And since it's such a big freaking deal, we really want to take our time, you know, frolic. some really good, yeah, some reflecting, yeah. some frolicking, some just appreciating of yes. where we've been. Yes. So Heaven, do you know how when you go to a restaurant, right, and you order a glass of wine mm -hmm. and sometimes they'll bring you the wine, they'll bring you the wine glass, or if it's at a like really classy restaurant, the wine glass is already on the table because they yes, assume yeah. you're gonna drink wine. <laughs> yes. So they bring you a carafe of mm. wine, and so like they'll pour. I it, love right? a carafe. Right. Wine. First of all, shout out to carafe. <laughs> But second of all, they pour your first glass of wine mm. from the carafe, right? Mm. And you know when they do that and there's still some left? Yes! And it's like, yo, when I finish this <laughs> glass, I still have more to look forward to. Are you yes. kidding me? That's what we're doing for y'all for our 101 st anniversary yes. special. Yes! We're going to have some wine and then we're going to have a little carafe left. A, a little, little wine. wine. A little bonus wine. A little spillover wine. Yes! So what all this means is you get a full episode of 101 birthday celebrations <laughs> now. And then you get some later. All right, so our first guest today. What? <laughs> Is it me? There's nobody else Excuse here, Tracy. Me, do not interrupt my introduction. <laughs> okay. My bad. Thank you. It's hard to sit still. Our first guest today <laughs> goes by the names Young Oprah, <laughs> Young Sippy Cup. Oh. DJ, I'm a baby. It's true. She be doing shit. Sometimes. She be making dope shit. Occasionally. Mostly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not bad. Here. Not I'm bad. Here. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Miss Heaven, young Oprah Nagatu. Oh my God, it's me. Thanks for coming to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I've been here. <laughs> I would love to start off talking about baby heaven. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen pictures of baby heaven. She seemed to be a very serious child from what <laughs> I could true. tell. It's um, is there a particular smell that reminds you of your childhood? Probably just the smell of like garlic and everything. Ooh. And wanting to like running to close all the doors so the smell doesn't get everywhere <laughs> when oh. my parents are cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the distinct smell, not wanting the smell on all the other things. Uh huh. How would your parents describe you as a kid? I feel like they'd say I, I read a lot. I was a precocious child. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> um, I thought I was a great kid. I think I still am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I feel like I was like very um, just like your average kid curious about life. Rambunctious. Yeah, a little Running bit. around doing yeah, stuff. Playing soccer. Like normal, quote yeah. unquote, average kid. Yeah, yeah. I definitely was a grumpy baby. <laughs> <laughs> right. You self-identify as a grumpy baby. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of your parents, I can't remember hmm. if they know about the podcast yet. They do. What what is that what does that mean? <laughs> they do in that I wish they didn't. <laughs> that was what that tone was. Uh-huh. But I also don't know like if they're listening on crazy. So you don't know if they've heard it? No, they've definitely heard it. Oh. But I don't know if they're like regular listeners. I don't know if it was just like one time they listened and then like didn't subscribe. I don't, uh -huh. I don't want them to listen. So uh -huh. I hope why they are not right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, mom and dad. Why don't you want them to listen? I want to have the space to talk about more adult things that I would not talk about with them normally. 
Mm. So it's just like awkward. Don't don't be in this space. This yeah. is a separate space. <laughs> right. I completely didn't buy it. Not that this is about me at all, but saying I know you know Tracy. <laughs> Like, they know that we've, like, interviewed Hillary Clinton and stuff. Yeah, they know enough about the show to brag on it. Yeah, 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 definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, that's what Ethiopian parents do. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think there will be a day, or do you hope there will be a day when you can have these sort of discussions within earshot of your parents, if not with them? Nah. You don't think it'll happen, or you're not interested in it happening? Oh, I mean, we... I'm not interested. <laughs> 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 like I just feel okay not talking to my parents about certain things. That's mm-hmm. that's allowed. I don't feel the need to like be all sherry, all crazy. <laughs> I feel like that's a heaven quote of the century. <laughs> <laughs> On your real housewife show, <laughs> that's your opening tag. <laughs> it's true. Um, do you feel like your parents are proud of you? Yeah, totally. Aww. How do you know? They say it. To you? Mm-hmm. Aww. Um, I'm always so curious. I'm always curious about the things that you speak the least about. So I'm very curious about your parents still, which is why we're still talking about your parents. What is the cutest thing about your mom and dad? <laughs> I feel like I, I speak the least about them because they're very private people. Mm-hmm. I definitely got all my cues about like privacy from them. I'm just like, why are you asking all this? Why, why are you asking all these questions? <laughs> is that <laughs> because they, business. <laughs> they weren't very forthcoming with you when you were little? Yeah, definitely. Like, mm. for why? <laughs> well, you got to know. <laughs> and I get it. Uh, so some of that I'm unlearning and some of that I'm keeping. Uh, I think that sounds <laughs> Some of smart. it feels right and some of it feels unnecessarily withholding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so part of the reason I don't talk about them that much is because they're very private. I feel like they wouldn't want to be talked about that much. Yeah. So is answering a question about how what's the cutest thing about them weird? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Cool. (laughs) I always feel like people who, I mean, as the child of of a single parent, in my head, I always feel like people who grow up in those households seek to replicate the same Mm. home situation. Like, do you actively want to be married? Oh, my God. Jesus. It'll get funner. This is a, I feel like this is a, if you were caught up on insecure we could talk about this via pop culture which is how i love Mm. to steer (laughs) conversations instead of via my personal life um molly is in a similar situation as you imagine wow (laughs) you see that pivot yo i can't even be mad at the pivot go ahead tell me about molly so molly's parents have been married for like 20 some years and she's acted all immature and brand new like Parents don't have, like, difficulties or, like, people cheat or, like, Mm. she's meeting a character who has an open marriage and she's like, it's unfathomable to me. No. Mm. And I'm like, girl, grow up. There is definitely a stability there. Yeah. That that's not to be, like, taken for granted. But I don't think I'm, like, holding on to this, like, idyllic image of romance and marriage and whatever. Yeah. I do think I'll eventually get married, maybe. Yeah, like you'll trip and fall and end up at an altar. Like, I'm married. <laughs> How'd that happen? <laughs> uh, but you actively want a baby. That you oh, know. Oh, very much so, yes. Yeah. Give me all the babies. <laughs> <laughs> I would have a baby right now if it wasn't so inconvenient. That alarms me every time you say it. <laughs> I believe it every time. <laughs> uh, I believe it too. Okay, so I've been trying to think of like my earliest podcast memories mm. to see and measure how we've grown and changed or not. Word. I want to talk about a change that you've gone through since I've known you. Mm. Um, body image, body issues. Oh, Lord. Wait. <laughs> we've only touched on this in therapy, so I don't even know what y'all, what you're about to ask me. <laughs> Just like, I wasn't ready for the therapist questions. So. Uh, being in the public eye is crazy. Oh, tell me about it's it. It's changing in the public eye is crazy. And in the past couple years, you've lost a significant amount of weight to the extent that people have like asked me, yo, what's heaven's secret? What is she doing? Uh, I'm so uh, sorry about that. Oh, no, it's fine. Uh, I'm very good. At being like you are hit him with the pivot hit him with the block <laughs> right 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 do the husband on him <laughs> but uh what has it been like for you to undergo such a physical change so so publicly there was a moment for me where i changed the way i asked other people about their weight mm. because my friend was checking in with her friend and she was saying like, oh, he looked great. And I told him that and I later learned he had cancer and he had lost a dramatic amount of weight. Uh, That shit changed my fucking life. I was like, wow, there are a lot of ways we value like thin or good 
we're just imposing that narrative as opposed to healthy or like you seem like you're glowing like mm-hmm. compliments based on like acts or moods versus like literal rail thinness or whatever mm-hmm. so i was like wow i need to change the way i i feel like i've definitely said something like that to someone where they right. lost a dramatic amount of weight and i like don't know the circumstances sure. at all and I do the over presumptive, girl, you look great. Mm-hmm. And then it's just like, ooh, we don't know the circumstances. Yeah, yeah. So I've appreciated people who've asked me about this in the same way that you have with just like caution. And like, I'm, I'm not mad at, at th- these questions at all because it's such a thing that it's like a very obvious thing that's happening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't avoid it. <laughs> so I, I don't really have like a useful answer for people. People want like a diet thing. Yeah. Like, what is the thing that you did? And my thing is just like mostly like weight related to health reasons and mm-hmm. like what am I going to do prescribe the the certain meds that I went on this certain time and then this counteracted with right. this versus mm-hmm. I could give you the breakdown of like literally what happened this month this month this month but I have found when I give people that answer that it is not what they are looking for what's been the hardest part of this change your physical change I don't know I feel like people just read a lot just impose their own things on weight stuff like in the same way that I get uncomfortable when people ask me about my age. Mm. It's because they often project their own age things. And I'm like, I understand that society values you less because this (laughs) happens. I just want to emphasize my journey started here because this thing happened. I got this privilege. Like, I want to give them the list of things that happened that got me to this point. Mm. But that's like not helpful to people Mm. because it's not the answer that they want, which is like, I had a waist trainer or <laughs> right. I don't I eat drink bread. this uh, tea from Instagram. <laughs> right, right, right. You should start telling people that. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I've been joking about that a lot, but I want to get into that hustle. Yeah. <laughs> Instagram honey hustle. Wait, what does that mean? What does that sound on Instagram? Mean? I just feel like I feel very disconnected from my body in that it's had these fluctuations. So I'm just like, what's going to happen next? Yeah. <laughs> but this current body that I'm in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is the body of an Instagram model, like uh-huh. the girl who sells you tummy tea bullshit deregulated stuff that the FDA doesn't approve. Right. <laughs> so I'm just like, listen, this is what we got right now. We're going to work it. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have another fluctuation and you find yourself in the same body that you were in two years ago, will that IG honey stunting continue, do you think? Well... Yes. Now, because I have, like, the money to dress that body. Uh, Before, it's like it's like that Tumblr post. I didn't have enough money for my aesthetic. That's my aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm like, oh, I know how to, like, find clothes that fit mm-hmm. your body at the stage that it is currently in. Mm. It's a very basic lesson in dressing yourself. <laughs> Look at the glow up. <laughs> right? Look at the glow up. <laughs> clothes that fit. Another then versus now thing that I'm always mm. very curious about is you're much more, of the two of us, you're the more reserved. <laughs> True. I would say. <laughs> Accurate. I'm like, guess what my pancreas did today, <laughs> y'all? But you are not quite the same type it's of person. True. It's true. But I'm curious to hear how you think that has changed over the past year. Do you think you're more open now? Oh, my God. So much more. Yeah. Are you kidding me? How did that happen? I just watch you, Tracy. Girl. I'm not playing. Now it sounds like <laughs> this is a setup. <laughs> I'm not playing. I feel like you've taught me so much about like you are a very open person, but you do keep things to yourself. Mm -hmm. And like just even seeing that, even seeing that there is so much thought that goes behind like what do I share versus what do I keep to myself? And is that a thing that you've actively been working at? Being more open? Mm -hmm. Why? Definitely. It's come up in therapy a lot. (laughs) Speaking of therapy, girl, (laughs) how is it going? I've only been going to this person for like two months now. Yeah. So it still feels very early. Like, I haven't cried in front of her. I've cried in front of <laughs> so Wait, many you other people. cried in front people. of your therapist yet? <laughs> Not yet. Heaven, my first appointment. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> what does that like, mean? I feel like I'm low-key lying to my therapist. What's the point of that? Yeah. Well, how do, how do you Not lying. Your... Just the, the lie of omission. <laughs> yeah. Like, not crying in front of her feels like a lie. Mm. <laughs> I should be crying way more in front of her, <laughs> just proportionately to how much I cry in my life. Where are the tears? I think it's because I'm, I've am i scheduled my therapy sessions such that they're always after a thing uh-huh. so that I go. Mm-hmm. So that I have oh. the momentum of a day to, like, I just have to go to my next thing. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I tend to skip therapy, which is not good. My mm. one resolution this year was to go to therapy consistently. Mm-hmm. How's it going so far? Well, month two of this lady, I like her. Yeah. Feels consistent. I feel like I might stick through this one. Aw. 
What have you learned about yourself so far in this new round of therapy? Sometimes therapy annoys me because it's just like mad basic patterns. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> that you'd be repeating and shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just like, this again? What? <laughs> You mean institutions that have a pattern of this give me trouble? <laughs> you mean to tell me? <laughs> Predominantly white institutions <laughs> tend to have this psychological effect on me. <laughs> you know, just like the repetition of certain spaces or certain behaviors. And it just feels like, oh, you did this three years ago. <laughs> yeah. And it's almost the same thing. Like stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it's never like there's like a... A question she asks that gives you this big aha moment. You'll just be talking and it's just like, wait. <laughs> Don't it make you mad a little bit? Yes! <laughs> so like mad. the whole time. The whole time I had that in my brain. I feel like that's what Dorothy felt like in The Wizard of Oz when mm. the Glenda's like, you've had the power inside you the whole time. Bitch, you might have told me this two <laughs> hours ago. <laughs> yes. Are you kidding me? And several therapy bills ago. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And so you said that you recently got off at least one man? All yeah, meds? all meds. Wow. And just to be clear, I went off my meds with the help of a medical professional. Mm -hmm. They are there for this very reason, to help you think through where you're at in your journey Mm -hmm. with meds. And even if you're not thinking about going off or increasing your dosage, just Mm -hmm. make sure that you are seeing your medical professional regularly. Mm -hmm. Because they have to manage your dosage and your medicines and your prescriptions based on how you're doing, based on your therapy, based on other things. So you need tune-ups regularly. Make sure that you're getting them. Mm. I honestly didn't want to talk about it until I had, like, a few months distance from it. Just, Mm -hmm. what if shit went crazy? (laughs) And I'm like, don't do that, guys. (laughs) I don't know. I I like to have a little lag time in how I'm talking about my my mental health versus how I'm experiencing it. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And I'm like, it's going okay, and I'm, like, skeptical. Yeah, you're, like, waiting on the other shoe to drop. Yeah. Like, everything is suspiciously chill. (laughs) (laughs) Like, where did this energy come from? Mm -hmm. When's it going to go away dramatically? (laughs) Why is this happening? Why do I have energy in this morning? (laughs) What's wrong? Yeah. I feel very suspicious. Is this, like, one of those things where you have to, like, relearn how to feel a feeling? Yeah. I feel like I'm, like, relearning so much. Like, mornings, what do people do when they get up? How do they do it every day? (laughs) So I'm off meds. Or, like, that used to be such a big part of my morning routine was, like, making sure I take my meds this morning. Mm. And then that being the thing that orients how much energy I have to approach all the things, which I'm... I've set up in such a way that I have a momentum to go through the, you know, all this yeah. stuff that you do in the morning to get yourself through the day. I'm like, wait, shit, I don't have my meds now. What what, what do the people do? <laughs> so I'm like, oh, coffee. Uh-huh. Have you heard of it? <laughs> I'm on my second cup. <laughs> How's it going so far overall? I don't know how everyone doesn't poop on coffee. <laughs> I, don't I mean, I do. <laughs> I don't get it. Aren't y'all poopy all the time? <laughs> I mean, I can't. I, can. I don't get it. <laughs> So it sounds like you're poopy all the time. (laughs) An unreasonable amount, I would say. Okay. And I'm trying to figure out what what the stitch is. I feel like we should talk about this in pew, pew, pew. (laughs) (laughs) I will allow it. (laughs) (laughs) I will allow it. So before we run out of time. (laughs) That was my transition. Okay. I was like, wait. Is it coming? Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, I want to talk a little bit about your plans for world domination. Ooh. Now, I know that there's a certain amount that you can't tell us because you don't want somebody stealing your plans, et cetera, et cetera, (laughs) blah, blah, blah. I get it. But you are working freelance for BuzzFeed. That's true. You were at the show that I'm going to call the Colbert Report for the rest of my life. The late show, Stephen Colbert on CBS. Yes. (laughs) On (laughs) CBS. You were there briefly. So what are you doing besides this podcast right now? I feel like I read an interview with Rembert Brown. Who? And Lin-Manuel Miranda. Who? Where Lin's basically quoting Robert Rodriguez's Rebel Without a Crew. And he says, just don't let them know what your sophomore project is. He had already had the big splash of In the Heights. And like everyone had already at that point been asking, what's your next project? What's your next project? Mm -hmm. And he was like tired and like overwhelmed about like trying to meet the success of the first one and like the perennial artist problem. I did it once. Can I do it again? Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel in in a similar like another round is a hit i know i can make a thing maybe (laughs) i feel i feel that some days i believe it solidly some days you know it's a little quaky Mm -hmm. but i'm like trying to figure out what is a second area of interest for me that 
like feels true to what I care about, but also isn't just like someone threw some money at me and I'm just trying the next thing that yeah. is flashy, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. So I, I, I've been trying to kind of keep it close to the chest of just wanting the space. Because like, I also feel like another round fans are so generous that mm. I could do a really shitty thing and they'd be like, yeah, heaven, you did the thing. <laughs> I'd be like, you guys are so nice, but I don't believe you, you mm. know? A part of it is me wanting to go to like stand-up spaces where like, the another round audience isn't there so i can have yeah. like a fresh audience who who is not already in love with you exactly mm. <laughs> no just who is not as head. generous yeah as our fans are mm-hmm. so i i that is the part of me that wants to keep it close to the chest okay was it scary leaving the security of a nine to five regular check every week no really say more about that because i don't know shit about that life girl I honestly, it, I think it was just a mental health thing. Like, I don't think I could have done the nine to five for much longer. Mm. Like, I, th- I feel like my psyche was going to break. Wow. So, like, I cannot. You want me to do this again the next day? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, not having hours that I set or big spaces like BuzzFeed can be very, am- just being in the office can be draining because it's just, there's so much happening, yeah, you know? Yeah, it's a lot of stimulus. It's a lot of stimulus. <laughs> and like being outside of that space really helped me just sort of like decompress and be like, okay, what am I into? What, what's going on? What's mm-hmm. happening in my life? <laughs> and so you just trusted that as long as you took care of that part of yourself, the mental health part of yourself, then the money part, all of that would fall into place. Yeah. You're one of the bravest people that I know. What? I swear to God. I feel like I couldn't get the the money without the sanity. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like there are a lot of people who know that, but still the risk and anxiety that comes with not knowing if this freelance project is going to come through with the check on time. Or- yeah. I don't know. I think I've seen enough mediocrity to know I can get a steady job somewhere. Mm. Just being in media for like, what, five years that I've been here. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you know, I can do that job. Yeah. I got it. I got it. That is a feeling and sentiment that I'm trying to teach myself at 35 Mm. years old. I'm getting there partly because I get to see you do it. But where do you think it comes from? Like, especially in a world. so much mediocrity. Right. It's so inspiring. But so many. I grew up seeing the same (laughs) mediocrity, but I'm still not necessarily like, oh, Mm. this little piece of shit can do X, Y, and Z. I know I got it because my brain is trying to think of all the hurdles and the things that can keep me from getting it. But you don't seem to have that same hesitation. I don't know. I feel like I've always thought I'm going to die young. Wow. (laughs) And I'm always like just trying to fit in literally as many things as I can until that time comes. Mm -hmm. Even if I don't still believe that I'm going to die young. Like that was definitely a thought from a more depressed me. So you don't feel that anymore? Mm, I feel it sometimes. Mm. But mostly I'm just like, no. With the right tools, one can live a long and healthy life. (laughs) (laughs) Come through therapy. (laughs) Yes. Just feeling like things are possible. I'm like, okay, maybe I'll die young, but it's possible Mm -hmm. (laughs) that I could die perhaps at 100. Yeah. So I think it's a little bit of that, a little bit of Kanye taught me, Yonsei taught me, like Mm -hmm. just boss up. What are you proudest of in your professional career over the last year? Hmm. I don't know. Generally killing it. <laughs> what podcast is this consistently giving you these hits? Come on, fam. <laughs> guest after guest. You right. We putting y'all on. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. I don't know. I feel like we've been generally killing it. Mm-hmm. That's my answer. I agree. I think it's great. <laughs> um, what are you proudest of in your personal life for the last year? Mm. Honestly, just going to therapy consistently. Mm. and trying to find a new one when the other ones didn't fit. Oh, my God. When the other ones didn't fit. Yeah. I love it. That's the hard part. You're like, I got to do this again. It's like dating somebody and finding out (laughs) that they're an asshole. You got to start all over. Except they're like a professional. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay. What? Now, this is going to be maybe a more difficult question to answer. Mm. But what outfit in the past year are you proudest of? Ooh. Hmm. Was the Obama picture this last year? Uh, we looked amazing. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I got that shit framed and sent to my parents. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. I made sure they cropped out my feet because I had one toenail polish. 
What? I had like one, what? <laughs> one toe with polish still on it. The rest not. What was I doing? I guarantee you that nobody saw your toes in that picture. I remember that picture. Nobody was looking at your Listen, toes. Listen, they sent not us the high definition photo, okay? <laughs> you can zoom in <laughs> to all the things. Thank you to the White House at that time. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's just got real heavy, y'all. Um, but we looked great. Um, yeah. You in this curtsy dress. Girl. <laughs> a dress only made for curtsying. Uh, we got to get a time machine and go back. And then I had a little slick going. Yeah. You had the, you, had the, you was hitting them with the shoulders. Yeah. You know? We looked amazing. We did. Good answer. Yeah. Good answer. I mean, this has been a joy. Yes. I was nervous, but I survived. Oh, my God. I did too. Oh, yay. <laughs> Support for Another Round comes from Squarespace. With Squarespace, you get a unique domain experience that's simple to set up and an all-in-one platform to help you create a beautiful, modern website that's nothing like those old dial-up websites. You remember that sound? To help quiz me on some other old-school computer sounds, I have Tyler Sorensen from BuzzFeed's creative department sitting in the control booth with me today. Hello, Tyler. Hey, Tracy. Let's do it. I'm ready. Here is your sound. Oh, uh, it's a, um, a CD-ROM being inserted? Yep, yep, that's Yay! it. What did you think it was before? First, I was going to say it's uh, it's the sound that a a film camera makes when you load it oh, and it like rewinds yeah. for a second. Yeah. Then I was like, nope, I'm too smart. I know what it is. Gosh, I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> Get your unique domain today at squarespace.com. If you sign up for a year, the domain is free, and you can also save 10% off your first purchase with the offer code Another Round, as in the name of the show that you're listening to right now. Make your next move with Squarespace. I am so thrilled today to introduce to you, I don't know if you've heard of a one Brokey McPoverty. <laughs> What's up, Jab Siggles? <laughs> Yeah, ready to listen to an interview. Oh my God, I'm so thrilled to interview Tracy Clayton of <laughs> the famed Another Round podcast. Hi, what? Me. What? Hi. Um, Tracy, I was looking through your website. Oh, oh no, <laughs> that was first of all the first response was to her drink, not yeah. me. The first <laughs> that uh was the, the taste of the scotch. It got uh, me, yeah. got me in the throat. But <laughs> no, <laughs> but then also <laughs> why. You have literally the cutest about me of all time. <laughs> I don't even know what it was. The about me section is called Beyond the Goof. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. I'm just going to read you the opening line. Could you not? I'm silly. Everyone knows this. Oh but what God. everyone doesn't know is that I actually write things beyond reality TV show recaps and tee hee ha ha stuff. <laughs> I just really like that part. <laughs> Do you feel like people frequently underestimate you? I used to. It used to be a really big complex of mine. Mm. Um, now it's less of a complex, mostly because I just don't, aside from this book that I'm supposed to be writing, I don't think about writing as much anymore because I now work primarily in audio. Word. But yeah, for years... Probably around junior year of college, mm. I feel like I hit what I believe to be an extensive writer's block. And so I couldn't write the next great American novel that I felt like I was supposed to be here to write. And so that's around the time when I started blogging and like just writing goofy stuff. And that's what people came to know me for. Mm. But I wanted to be like, okay, but. Excuse me. <laughs> let me tell you about Edgar Allan Poe and what I learned from him, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. But at the same time, I was like, well, also I can really write, but I wasn't also really writing. So mm. I was like, I'm going to die and nobody's going to know that, like, I can write a really good short story. Word. I still kind of feel that way. You should have. You just said it on your world-famous podcast. <laughs> True. <laughs> now everyone will know because everyone listens to the show. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> this is solving many of my problems. Yes. <laughs> I do feel like um, I've seen many a people, like, explain your joke to you. Oh, girl. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. Mm. That and people on Twitter suggesting obvious shit to me, uh, which they do all. Have you I, tried Google? Oh my, that happened yesterday. <laughs> it happened yesterday. Sam, you really think you put me on to Google? Yo, I was like, yo, tell me from your own personal experiences, these vacation sites that you have used and that you like. Google, LOL. <laughs> Do you know how I be wanting to, sometimes when I'm feeling real petty, like at my pettiest, I just be wanting to be like, fuck it, mm. and just go off. But then I hear Eleanor's voice in my head, and I don't want to get in trouble. Wow. One of my questions is, who is in your head that's wise? 
Illinois. <laughs> Because sometimes, no, honestly, like sometimes we'll be tagged in the same thing uh-huh. and like I'll take a moment, like laugh to myself and be like, bitch thought. <laughs> and then like 15 minutes later, I'll see yeah. you have responded on Twitter. <laughs> but I not, think but it's not, funny always, but not, not always, but not always. I'm, I'm curious. Better. I'm curious when you decide, you know what? I think it's time to respond. I used to be pretty bad at that, especially in like the beginning days of the podcast mm. because... It was just like all of my professional nerves were like exposed, right? I I just had a baby and I'm putting it into the right. world. And if you say one gross <laughs> word about my child, I don't care if he's cross-eyed and got three <laughs> nostrils. I don't care that it's he's my a work baby. In progress. <laughs> God is not finished with him yet. <laughs> oh. uh, so I used to be very defensive and very reactionary, mm. I think. Um, now I do a good job of not responding right away, for one. True. And two, just asking myself the question, to what end? Like, what happens? <laughs> you know, what happens if I respond to this person? I be having to hold myself back, though, sometimes. I see you. I do. <laughs> I see you holding back the petty. <laughs> <laughs> the restraint. Y'all don't see it. You don't. So earlier in the year, you went on Death, Sex, and Money. Shout out to Anna Sale. Hey, girl. Hey. And you talked to her about your resolutions. Mm-hmm. I, like Anna, um, originally followed this journey when you were just sort of tweeting them out into the universe. Right. Which they were just so impressive and honest and awe-inspiring. I was like, yes, I want these resolutions, Aww. too. <laughs> Can I read a few? <laughs> yeah. I mean, these are so relatable, Tracy. <laughs> uh, so you're saying there are so many things I want for 2017, and I believe in speaking things into existence. So I'm going to use this thread to do that. Yes, I love a good useful thread. <laughs> Rare. <laughs> <laughs> I want stability in all areas of my life, financial, emotional, home, work. I want significantly less chaos everywhere. Well, you can't account for the world, but <laughs> <laughs> some things are just beyond my yes. control. I want to finally get over my fear of looking like a fool and finally get these braces because I miss my smile. Mm. I want to put as many of my people on as I can. I want to do the hard work of reconciling my past relationships so that I can prep myself for the partnering kids I'm scared to admit I want. I want to travel. I want to get my finances in order. I want to finally begin giving back to my mother everything she has given to me over the course of my life. I want some real fucking grown-up furniture. (laughs) Real. (laughs) I want to get serious about volunteering my time and giving back. These are just a few. I'm mm-hmm. not going to read the whole thing because there's a lot that are amazing. Yeah. But how are they going? Um, so, yeah, some better than others. Um, I do not have braces yet. And I've kind of been dragging my feet for a couple of reasons. One, honestly, is I'm just scared. I don't want it to hurt. Mm. And I don't want to look goofy with braces because I can't get, like, the little cute Invisalign. I oh. can't get, you know, they're just, like, metal ass <laughs> metal braces. The, box, the doctor describes metal ass braces. <laughs> <laughs> Not the and cute they, kind. <laughs> I had second, third, fourth, and fifth opinions. And oh, everybody's shit. like, no. Just go ahead and get these metal ass braces. Mm. So I haven't done it because I'm vain and because I'm scared, but also because it's part of my grieving process since losing my grandmother. Mm. So, quick story when I was younger, my grandmother used to pull all of my teeth. Like, as they got loose and came with out. With her hand? With her hand. <gasps> Listen, my, my granny was a, <laughs> she was a G. She was a country woman How did who that was feel not, as a child? A human just took a <laughs> not great. tooth out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't the funnest thing that I've ever done in my life. But the crazy thing is, it was just like um, Charlie Brown and Lucy. Mm. Where every every time I had a loose tooth, she'd be like, come here, let me see. I'd be like, no, you're going to pull it out. She's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> yes, you are. I'm not going to fall for this again. <laughs> She's like, come on, just let me see it real quick. And I'm like, okay. Oh. And every time. Yoink. Like, yes. Every time. I'm like, no. <laughs> Granny. Oh, that's amazing. But every single time. So um, It's always by hand? Always by hand. No, none of that, like, put a. She didn't have time. Put a floss with the thing and she then pull the thing. She did not have time. But no, but she just, like, just Boink. give me this and then go on somewhere. And then go play. That all was right, all. That's all right. she had time for. So um, I grow older. I lose all of my baby teeth but one. My dentist, when I was younger, was always like, well, I mean, if you don't mind the way that it looks, it doesn't hurt, whatever. Like, Mm. I mean, just leave it. It's fine. And so I just assumed I was going to have a baby tooth for the rest of my life. So my grandmother passes away. Last year? Oh, it's coming up on the year. So in October. She passed away. Um, And my tooth had been getting really loose in the months leading up to her passing away. Like, super, super loose. Oh, like, you know when kids, like, play with their loose mm, teeth and it, like, skews you out? That's yeah. how loose it was. And so I, I don't know how to grieve. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing or feeling. I don't know what I need. Am I supposed to go out and get drunk and drown my feelings? Mm. 
probably. So that's what I did. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> me and um me and some friends went out and into my third glass of wine, I just feel like the the smallest little pluck inside of my mouth. And my baby tooth had come out. What? Now, the night before, I'm pretty sure that my grandmother had come to visit me in my apartment. Um, long story long, I had some, uh, <laughs> had a bunch of candles lit because I was, mm. you know, just enjoying candles. And I had a friend over. I had fallen asleep. I woke up. And I was like, oh, can you go and blow out these candles for me? He's like, yeah. He gets up, blows out all the candles. I happened to look at the windowsill and one of the candles is still lit. It's a yellow candle. And I'm like, I asked you to blow out the candles. He's like, no, I did. I blew out every single candle. And at least two or three other times, like that candle like reignites after mm. I assume it's been blown out. So I feel like she came to just like get this last little tooth wow. on her way out. Wow. Now, I say all that to say that even though I hate the way that like my face looks, <laughs> which is a sucky thing to say, Seeing like this gap in my mouth makes me think of that night when I lost my tooth, and it just mm. reminds me that I really think that she was like still around then. So maybe she's still it's been around like now. yoink. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> you still falling for it still after all these years. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. I've never heard that. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, this is one of the things I keep to myself. I don't talk a whole mm. lot about like the grieving process and and all that stuff. Mostly because I don't. I don't know nothing about it, really. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, am I am I feeling right? Word. I don't know. Can we talk about some of the other things on this list? Mm-hmm. Money. Oh, girl. <laughs> Money's so hard. Money is really hard. Um, I am getting used to having it. Mm. Yo, shout out to disposable income. That's a crazy thing. And when I say getting Game used to changer. having it, it's that exactly. Like... Being able to call friends over and mm. just being like, I'm going to order man desserts and Popeyes <laughs> and it'll be fine. You sure did, Tracy. I, I mean, I didn't want to, you know. <laughs> but, Tracy treated us. <laughs> and it was a fun time. I mean, like nobody had to worry about like Venmo this mm. and that, do mm. this, that, and the third. Who put in enough? Who mm. ate too many chicken strips? Like, <laughs> you know. Normally we count. <laughs> listen, <laughs> as soon as you walk in, you have a chicken strip ticket. You turn this in in the kitchen. <laughs> Not a ticket. <laughs> but it's nice to not have to do that. Mm. You know, now I'm not just like up and going to like Fiji all crazy. Okay. Yet. Yet. But um, I do have disposable income now. Um, I'm still not managing it well, which kind of is like. <laughs> That's a separate journey. Doesn't matter at all. <laughs> but um, I, I'm i getting better at paying my rent on time, which okay. is a big deal. Okay. Because like, yeah, I was getting so many late fees that I thought they had just raised my rent. And so like I went to have a conversation with them. They was like, No. <laughs> That's all like, you, you mother <laughs> You so. so for the last two months, I have sent my rent off on time. Mm. So that's going to save me a lot of fucking money. Okay. I'm curious where you are in your therapy journey. Um, I feel I'm, like you've been talking a lot about it. Um, I'm at a really great point with therapy now. And that's coming after a really not great point with therapy. Mm. And I could, I've been doing a lot of research lately on the oil cleansing method for my face. There's a, there's a link. Sure, sure. So the oil cleansing method, if you're not familiar, is you just use oil to clean your face because oil dissolves dirt. And like there are certain types you can use and blah, 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 blah. Uh, It's supposed to be the best thing for your face. Like as soon as your face gets used to it, Mm. then it's really, really good for it. But in the beginning stages as the impurities are like being brought to the surface Ooh, metaphor yeah <laughs> you see see what happens when you let me lay uh so yeah you can have like a lot of breakouts and like mm, your skin is just like dang. vomiting like Drag the me. hard shit yeah <laughs> so that's what the beginning of therapy has been like mm. like just because there is so much that i compartmentalized because i didn't have the strength or energy to deal with it so mm. i just didn't i just put it in a box because i was like i gotta go to work because i gotta eat because i gotta pay my pay, bills listen. yeah um, and so the first part of therapy was going through all of those boxes. And there was a time for real where I was like, either I'm going to continue therapy or I'm going to keep working. Cause mm. like I couldn't, mm. like I just could not function with like all of this new shit just in my lap. And the thing is, so a good thing that she told me is that, um, you're feeling all of this stuff now because your brain now trusts that you're strong enough to deal with it. Mm. And I'm like, that's encouraging and inspiring as fuck. But could my brain just give me these problems one at a time? Because <laughs> my brain was legit like, here's everything you've been hiding from in the past 10 years. Oh, no. Yeah. And so just like trying to move through the world with that on my back was just, mm. it was so hard. Mm. It was so hard. But around the time we did the New Orleans show, like I just felt like lighter and different. And 
my therapist says that it's because I'm doing a good job of self acceptance. Wow. I know. And I was like, are you, I'm like, are you serious, girl? Oh my God. Yeah. Because I was like, one of my biggest problems is like not being able to rest. Mm. Like, even when I'm at home and I'm like, this is time that I'm not going to use to do anything, I don't rest because my brain is like, you're not resting right. You should be reading a book and not on the internet. You should be cleaning up and going through your clothes. You can do that while you sit here, blah, blah, mm. blah. Um, and that's because, like, I just wasn't accepting, like, myself and what it was able to do and what it was not able to do. But now I'm just like, you know what? I can get to things later and it's okay. Like, the way that I'm feeling, the energy that I have right now, like, it's just like, it's okay. Word. I'm not out of the weeds yet. I still don't go outside a whole lot. I still have not gotten my nails done. That's, like, my barometer for, um, I guess, how I'm doing in my, like, clawing my way out of this hole that I found myself in. Like, for the longest time, going to get my nails done was, like, a self-care thing that I could do because it was easy. Mm. And when things got bad, it was like, I couldn't even do that. So now I'm, like, I'm getting the itch to go back to the to the nail salon. So I'm like, ooh. That's a good itch. Might be energy. <laughs> oh, Maybe snaps. it's some more energy. Oh, snap. <laughs> I know you've always wanted to write a book. Yes. Was that your first artistic goal? Yes. A book book? Like a novel? Like a book book. How's that going? Um, I have put book book efforts um, uh, on the back burner as I'm like focusing on like myself and therapy Word. and just trying to like be very good and kind to myself and only tackle the anxiety inducing things that I have to tackle <laughs> you know like I have to go this to work every day so. <laughs> I am loving it yeah like I have to go to work every day and mm. that's hard for me a lot of times so let me put all of my energy there word and um, it's kind of like the the nail polish thing like I'm starting to get the itch again and I'm kind of like okay maybe I can mm. like take out the notebook where my um, first chapter is and like maybe I can at least like put it on the table and maybe tomorrow I'll be ready to open it yeah um, so as of now I'm still working on the proposal um, because writing freaks me out and it's one of the most anxiety inducing things even though like I love it and I have to do it to like stay alive <laughs> I hate it I hate the process <laughs> so I put that on hold but I'm just I'm almost ready to text my agent and tell her that Yo. I'm almost ready <laughs> to have a drink this and talk so about this real. <laughs> I'm in a perpetual state of I'm almost ready. <laughs> I think that's it. So real. So real, Tracy <laughs> McGee. I feel like for our, for listeners who've been following your work for a while, they mm -hmm. know your, your writing creative output, but maybe not know the wide reaches of it. Mm. All the tumblers you've had, perhaps. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> there are so many good ones. <laughs> How dare. <laughs> um, one of my favorites is... One that's just so delightful called Needlessly Crunk. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, for the listeners who have not <laughs> been put on to such game, <laughs> could you describe what it is and why you made it? Sure. Um, I made it because I was bored okay. and I just needed to keep the creative juices flowing somehow. Sure. Writing comes in all forms. Needlessly all forms. crunk forms, perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> and this is also, I think, around the time where I was starting to notice, like, goofy little tumblers being turned into books. And I'm like, well, mm. talk about a shortcut to the publishing world while I'm waiting on there the novel to happen. There was a period, wow. Yeah, that was a Where they were thing. going straight from Tumblr to book. Sh directly. Do you directly. remember what a few of those were? They were like, shit my dad says or shit something? Shit my dad says is the biggest <laughs> one. So you were like, oh, I bet I got it. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> yes. But I was also like, you know, yes. what is a what is a good, fun, easy, like something that I would enjoy like doing and writing. Okay, creating. so what is Needlessly Crunk? So Needlessly Crunk is a Tumblr full of pictures, and each picture has a bunch of crunk song lyrics that nobody asked for that should not exist. But it could be like a picture of a turtle, and it's just crunk song lyrics about the turtle what the turtle is <laughs> going through can you read one please i would, I would really love, to. love an entry to be read in your voice i would love to because i was reading them in my voice i was like no 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 i need tracy's <laughs> voice so this is one of my favorite needlessly crunk entries i'll show you this picture clearly a turtle swimming in the ocean right he's got his little flippers very up in the elegant air. photo i yeah, would say it's a little little baby sea turtle yes um so <laughs> So the gag is, the picture also, the turtle also looks like it's flying in this picture. It does kind of, yeah. <laughs> so, the uh, <laughs> so the lyrics are all about how this turtle's trying to fly when it can't. <laughs> um, I will, I've never performed either, any oh of these Oh my God, please take a sip of that okay. scotch. <laughs> Sit your ass down, turtle. 
You know you can't fly. Sit your ass down, turtle. Mm. You know you can't fly. You not a sparrow. <laughs> you not an eagle. You a turtle, nigga. A fucking turtle, nigga. You not a mockingbird. You not a falcon. You a turtle, nigga. A fucking turtle, nigga. It just occurred to me that you swimming in this picture. It just occurred to me that you swimming in this picture. Never mind, bitch. Never mind, hope. Never mind. Bitch. Oh my god. The journey, the narrative. Yeah. Never mind, hope. <laughs> Never mind, hope. What? <laughs> Oh my God, put a beat on that. I'm saying, I'm saying. Honestly, I don't understand why that wasn't immediately a book. <laughs> retweet if you know why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hit that manual retweet real quick. <laughs> oh, Tracy McGee. <sighs> I'm I'm really excited just to have a chance to pepper you with random questions about your writing like this. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever write some Obama erotica? Wow. You didn't have I to just found that. a tweet from 2008 that mentioned the phrase Obama erotica. OK, can I can I have the full context of the tweet, please? Or the, the whole text? I got you. <laughs> so if I really wrote some Obama erotica, <laughs> dot, 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 <laughs> would y'all read it? Question mark, question mark. <laughs> yes, Tracy, we would. The crowd goes crazy. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. So shout out to the enablers who were like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Have a little more social responsibility, please. <laughs> no, this is not my fault at all. I'm innocent. This is Nicole Perkins' fault. Mm-hmm. She and I met 10 years ago on this website called OKPlayer.com. Uh, it's also the same website where I met Jesus and Time Will. What is the secret place where all the blacks are hanging out? It's just <laughs> it's just where black people hung out on the internet before black all Twitter. Your faves. Yeah, and before yeah. black Twitter and stuff. And so Nicole and I used to do these writing exercises. Ooh. Um and I love a pen pal. Yeah. We were writing pen pals. Oh my God. Yeah. And so sometimes those exercises were kind of like, you know, erotica based shit. Okay, like how to okay. do the old shit but do it better. Uh-huh. But this was basically all her idea because <laughs> oh mama. <laughs> <laughs> Obama, you know, we both recognized that he was a handsome man mm. and a handsome man that people probably had some some biblical feelings okay, okay, for. Okay. And so we were like, you know, why not capitalize on the word? We're, we're pretty good at erotica, um, which I, we don't have to talk about. <laughs> but How did you guys come to be good at it? <laughs> There's backstory there. Uh, you know, just practice. Where did you practice? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so curious. <laughs> Love this rabbit hole. It this just is my got favorite really song. hot in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the way that Nicole and I met was mm. via the internet 10 years ago. So it was not cool to meet people on the internet. True. When we, facts. <laughs> when we first met. <laughs> we were both writers and we both talked about sex a lot. Mm. And we talked about Obama a lot. And we were like, yeah, we can we can, we can, can make some Zane type dollars <laughs> if we do it. Word? That was the plot? That was the plot. Okay. I think we wrote a chapter maybe. Of it's, Obama erotica. It's it exists. in somebody's email <laughs> where it will stay until the ends of the internet. <laughs> Yo. You'd have to give me a lot of money or a lot of liquor. For, I can't wait. Wow. When, for when this happens. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. I just had a vision of like James Lipton <laughs> pulling it up. <laughs> Inside the actor's studio with Tracy Clayton. Her Obama erotica. <laughs> Obama opened the door to the Oval Office. No! <laughs> See, it's already out. <laughs> oh, man. Nina's not into it. Oh, man. Not the Oval Office. <laughs> Did you know one of Google's auto completes for your name is how tall is Tracy Clayton? <laughs> <laughs> Can you please settle the debate for the people? <laughs> Help our search engine optimization. <laughs> Why is that an autocomplete? I don't know. I'm three apples high. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like one of mine was like weight loss. So like oh. it's just like a thing people might Google when they Google Interesting. you. Um, no, I'm five foot three and a quarter. All right. That settles the debate. That's that. <laughs> tell, tell all your friends, everybody. Of your many identities, one of them is also you're an amazing auntie. Oh my god, I, I'm about to cry. I wasn't ready. How do you how do you approach your auntie game? What's, Yo, man. what's your what's your <laughs> Okay. First thing first. All right, all right, talk to us. You gotta be the funnest person in that child's life. Okay, okay. Kids when they're young only value fun and food. <laughs> That's all they care about. They will about. dump you in a second. In a minute. Somebody else got a better <laughs> snack than you. Bye. <laughs> 
instant buy. <clears throat> okay, okay. So I had the advantage of being an auntie very young because my brother was super busy. Mm. So my... <laughs> sorry. So no, that's how we're going to person. <laughs> my bad. So I had I became an auntie at the age of 11. So I was a kid then anyway. So me me and my new my new A1, Tierra, we just in the streets. We oh, mobbing. You oh. know, we going to the store. We doing this. We doing that. Also, I was a very introverted kid. So this is like my niece and my friend when I was mm. younger. So I get older in the no, so awkward and lonely. So uh, I get older. The nieces and nephews just keep coming, and I'm like, well, I'm already fun <laughs> auntie. Let me just let me just keep it. It's gotten to the point where so now I live in New York City. When my niece and nephew from Indianapolis visit my mother, mm. my niece Len is always like, is Tracy gonna be there? Oh. <laughs> and if I'm not, she's gonna be like, but we need Tracy to have fun. Ah! That's what you want. Yes. You have to be their fountain of fun. Wow. Beautiful. Rule number one. Okay. But yes, first is get them on your side, have mm, fun, mm. and then it's fill their heads with as much truth as you can. Mm. Wow. Yes. Uh, that was that excellent was auntie game. I just made that up. <laughs> I like it. You lived that, Tracy. I lived it. You're right. <laughs> what has been your biggest glow up this year? Oh, wow. Um, This current upswing I'm on where I'm mm. like starting to feel like myself after being so out of sorts for so long like I've got the energy now to be like appreciative of like the good shit and the bad shit mm. like thank you for the struggles is a crazy thing to be able to say Word. but it's finally a thing that I'm starting to feel and I think that's been my biggest glow up I think the other day you're like I have a lot of energy and I think it's also because I'm happy oh yeah that shit blew my mind <laughs> I know and when you reacted I didn't realize you're like, you were like Maybe it's my meds, but also I'm happy. Yeah. And I was like, Whoa. <laughs> Your response. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> made me realize that that was the first time that I said the phrase "I'm happy in months." Mm. Like seriously, I talked to my therapist about it. She's like, "Say it again." And I was like, "Calm down. Let's wow, not push I'm it." Cry again. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tracy McGee. Mm. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Oh my gosh! Follow me on Twitter, everyone. <laughs> Where can the people find your work? You can find me at Rookie McPoverty. <laughs> gmail.com slash edgio slash gov gov <laughs> who in the gov gave you a gov <laughs> I'd tell you but I'd have to kill you stop it <laughs>
And I confirmed with him the day before, we were texting, whatever, and he's like, yeah, come over. He gave me his home address or whatever. I told my friends, you know, I don't really know this man. So I was like, listen, I'm gonna go to dinner. I ain't gonna fuck this guy, so I'm gonna be back here. <laughs> so if I'm not back in like a matter of like three, four hours, you mm. call me, you check up on me, because mm. maybe he murdered me and put me in his basement. But he's a black dude with a skateboard. They're not that type of crazy. And so <laughs> at the time of the day, I got all dressed up. Like I put on at least $50 worth of cosmetics. Yes. I, you know, I, I showed up at this guy's house. Girls. Oh. <laughs> Why was he not home? <laughs> Why was he not home? So I call him. I say, <laughs> I call him. Straight to voicemail. Yeah, but here, take the- I call him again. I text him. I'm like, am I at the right house? I see his name on the mailbox. What? I know. No. <laughs> like if someone saw me on Fifth Avenue and said, hey, girls, why was he not home? <laughs> yes. Uh, I feel like that applies to so many situations. Yeah. Even though that's such a specific story. <laughs> and it was, it was such a good story. It had everything. Yes. It had the ups, it had the downs, it had, it had Chipotle, spins, I think. It had <laughs> or <and> Chipotle. <laughs> I can't remember. Oh. So many memories. I so seldom like look back and like re-listen to mm. early, early shows, especially. Yeah. Oh my god, especially the teens, the early teens. Oh my down. gosh, the teens. <laughs> Who was like reading something that you wrote when you were really into poetry? Him. <laughs> Talking to myself. <laughs> um, but it was like a lifetime ago. Yeah. First time in LA. Making videos, mm-hmm. still learning how to podcast. Mm-hmm. We were such babies. We were. Oh, I did not remember us laughing that hard. <laughs> Me neither. And she like leaned and she was like, <laughs> but girl. <laughs> <laughs> also, like every everyone I know starts their stories. But why? Tell right. me why. Tell me why. <laughs> That's how you know a story is about yes. to be so good. Girl, tell me why. Yes. Ooh. Oh. oh. Such a a great moment. Such a great moment. Mine is kind of similar because it's also a moment of raucous laughter. Mm. Um, And this is actually a moment that I reference so often when people ask me my favorite podcast moments. Mm. Um, Love that question. (laughs) Yeah. It comes from the episode Lit Like Pick. This is episode six. This is the um, infamous Jesus episode. (laughs) And this is the exact moment that the Tracy oh, no. <laughs> was born. I have not re-listened to this. So a little bit of context. This is the drunkest that we've ever been on this show. <laughs> um, it was great to have that lesson early on. Early, before <laughs> there were so many six. people listening. <laughs> yes. We just got so drunk. And I think we got drunk because Jesus wasn't drinking the bourbon. He was drinking beer for some reason. So he we're did like, specifically request We're Bex. not going to let this perfectly good bourbon go to waste. Right. And go to waste it did not. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to relive this moment. Thank you to Eleanor, who was like our audio sister, who kept yeah. us very um, supplied with alcohol throughout the entire time. And we also want to send a super huge, super, super special shout out to Audrey Quinn. Yes. Who for the last couple of shows kept us together, kept us right. Fantastic. I would like to thank Heaven. Oh, I'd like to thank the Tracy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chichi. That's uh, okay. I would That's love... okay. Let's do it. I would love, love to thank Tracy. Oh, my stomach. Oh. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, no. That was so instructive of how to drink professionally. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Let me tell you why this is one of my favorite show moments. Number one. Oh, gosh. I feel like you rarely get super drunk. That's true. And two, you are one of those annoying drunks. <laughs> it's true. That you can never tell when they're drunk, when that, they get it's drunk. It's so unhelpful. It is. <laughs> so everyone around you and yeah. yourself. Because I'd be like, am I supposed to be this drunk right now? Because heaven is fine. <laughs> it's a lie. <laughs> so, so on this particular day, it felt like... Sure, too much bourbon, drinking it straight, yes. But it also just felt like you were like really, really comfortable and relaxed in the studio with friends, just knocking them back. And it felt like, it felt the way that we always intend this show to feel, which yeah. is like you're just kicking it with your homies yeah. that you haven't met yet. Mm. Um, and also, it's just, just the laughter in it, you know, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Raucous. <laughs> Raucous laughter. Oh, man. And it just, it reminds me of the constant joy you bring into my life. No. Even when you're not trying. <laughs> Even when I'm drunk and it slips out. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, 
back to the tree. <laughs> Shout out to that moment. Um, I do believe that we've done it. I do believe we have made it. I believe that the 101st episode is in the bucket. Oh. Under the belt. Tracy, we made it. Hey. Tracy, we made it. Ooh. Oh, wait. Cool, it's cool, time cool. for us to do credits. And before we do credits, I just wanted to get super mushy for a second about our amazing production team. Oh. I like... I talk about them so them like y'all can't hear me. I talk about y'all <laughs> <laughs> so often, like in interviews and stuff, mm-hmm. and like when I'm asked about like my mental health and what's it like to deal so publicly with this while you're working and doing this. My answer is always y'all. The pie squad. The pie squad. Sincerely, I should have been fired a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> any any boss with less of a heart would have let me go and just would have been like it's just too much. But yeah, it kept me around this whole time. And I love y'all. I appreciate it. I also feel like as a person who is not around as much, Mm -hmm. it's like I've been able to sample other teams and Mm. see the lay of the land and see how everybody else is working, what their production teams is looking like. Yep. And I'm just like, y'all my team, though. It's like. Y'all don't know nothing about it. (laughs) Y'all don't. Yeah. It's like creating healthy workspaces and giving your best ideas and like creating the the calendar such that you can brainstorm as effectively as possible. And trusting in each other and Mm. being honest with each other and genuinely loving each other not to be like I'm gonna tell you exactly how I feel and what I think and Word. X, Y, and Z I need to be honest with you right now and everybody's like yeah sure of course that's great I feel like one of the hardest things of doing this job is like I do not enjoy growing in public mm-hmm. <laughs> that's exactly what you signed up to do <laughs> which is exactly I was like oh I'm gonna record my thoughts every week <laughs> Cool. cool. Wow, cool. you have a very linear, <laughs> linear track of how you've grown. Yeah. Wow. And like the only way I have that kind of trust to know that the thing I'm doing is okay mm-hmm. is I feel like I have this team, this safe net that lets me know. Yeah. That was a thing. That was not a thing. <laughs> Let's do that thing over. <laughs> yeah. Don't do this particular thing again. Stick right. With that thing. Yeah. It's hard to grow in public, but it's not that hard when you have a team that's helping you grow. Oh. Okay, too many feelings, too many emotions. Uh, credits time. Shout out to the Pod Squad. Bah, bah, bah. Yes, Airhorn. This episode was produced by Nina Patak and Julia Ferlin with editorial oversight from Eleanor Kagan and Meg Kramer and production support from Agaranesh Ashagre and Alex Laughlin. Thank you to our in-house musicians, Miss Jean Gray. You can follow her on Twitter at Jean Greasy and Don Will of the Almighty Tanya Morgan. You can follow him at Don Will. You can follow Heaven at Heaven Rants. You can follow me at Breaking McPoverty. Email at another round. Twitter at another round. Facebook at another round. Black Planet at another round. <laughs> MySpace, another round. Yes. Friendster, another round. And if for some reason you haven't rated us on iTunes, let the 101st episode <laughs> be the reason. <laughs> it's time, It's y'all. time, y'all. It's what time. are you doing? <laughs> Listening to 102 episodes without leaving a review? No, you're not. That's not what you're not going to do. You. That's right. What she said, et cetera. <laughs> Um, subscribe to our newsletter it's so great you can do that at buzzfeed.com slash another round slash newsletter drink some water take your meds call your person um, thank you for sticking around for 101 yes. episodes and listen to 102 hey I have a present for you ooh this is why I'm late today because it took me a time or two to um to do what I was, you know what I'm saying, trying to do, you know what I'm saying. Um, I brought you. You straight up brought me a fucking joint. I did, <laughs> and I made it by myself. Y'all, this is a perfectly rolled. Mm. The, the finesse, mm. the technique. Mm. I am so impressed. <laughs>